Ad hoc commands are great for quick fixes, but playbooks are for getting serious. Let's dive in. As I explained in my last video, the Ansible command is very much about running quick commands and one-off tasks. However, playbooks and the playbook command are about grouping together tasks so that you can run them over and over and over against large sets of systems. But that's not the only benefit because playbooks actually document your state and your configuration too. Playbooks clearly define what needs to be done to bring your systems into a stable, functional state. They're also great for identifying the fact that you obey business rules. And if you're not implementing business rules or best security practices, then getting them in place is actually really simple. And finally, playbooks can actually be used as little units of logic that you can share between your team, your organization, and even reuse throughout your entire career. So playbooks are written in YAML. It's a simple structured language that can be parsed easily by a computer and is equally easy for a human to read and write. Inside of a playbook, we have a play. If you're familiar with the YAML syntax, you'll notice here we actually have two plays in this playbook denoted by the fact that document's root is a list of two items. Each of these is a play, and each is executed in order, not in parallel. Starting from fresh, we define a playbook by adding a new item to the top level root list. I always start my plays with the hosts key, which allows us to refine what systems this entire play should be targeted at. You can use the catch-all all keyword to target everything or you can limit the execution to specific hosts or groups. Next, we have the become keyword. This is used to tell Ansible whether or not it should become either the root or another user. In most cases, setting this to true is probably what you want, but if you can execute your commands without privilege escalation, then that's ideally what you should be doing. Using external variables from files, group vars, host vars, and so forth, is much nicer than using the vars keyword. But let's cover it anyway, just in case you want a self-contained playbook. Under the vars keyword, you can simply go crazy, defining whatever data types you want from strings, numbers, and lists to entire dictionaries. The variables you define here will then be available throughout the playbook for you to reference. Sometimes you actually do want to include variables from an external file, followed by a list of the files using either a relative or absolute path. Obviously, these files should be YAML, but they can also be JSON files, and anything you define in those files will be available throughout the playbook for reference. Now we get to the fun part, tasks. There are three keywords that you need to know about with regards to tasks. Tasks, pre-tasks, and post-tasks. The pre- and post-tasks are used to execute tasks before and after, respectively, any roles you've imported into the playbook. Sometimes you need to do a bit of bootstrapping in the playbook before any roles are executed. And perhaps you also need to do a bit of cleanup, hence post-tasks. The tasks keyword itself is where you start defining state you want the playbook to check and implement for you. The tasks keyword is a list in YAML, and each item is executed in order. Ansible is broken up into modules, and in the tasks list, you define what modules you want to execute by calling each module as a list item. Each module may or may not have arguments that need to be defined. Check out the module's documentation for a complete understanding of what modules exist and what arguments they can be provided. After writing several playbooks and chaining together lots of commands, you'll quickly start to notice you're repeating a lot of code and tightly coupling together unrelated system state, Roles are how you prevent that from happening, and they're also the solution to that problem. You write a role to manage a single resource or service for you. For an example, if you're implementing an Apache web server, you would write a role to install it, manage the configuration files, modules, and so on. Including roles in your playbooks is exactly the same as the var files block. It's a list of role names, although it can get a bit more advanced than that. Once included, the playbook is applied, the roles are imported, and executed in order. And there you have it, Ansible Playbooks. I hope this introduction to Playbooks has got your creative juices flowing and given you lots of ideas. If you've got any questions at all, then let us know in the comments. And as always, give us a like if you enjoyed the video and subscribe for more.